Good morning, everybody. Today is December 26th, day after Christmas, and I had told you that I would show you the Sam Poole stamps that I bought for myself for Christmas and the other items that I got for myself, and I got one crafty item from one of my kids. I think it was my son and daughter-in-law. So we're going to look at what I got, look through these books a little bit, and then maybe we'll get to do a little work with these um, stamp sets that I got. So this is what my um, what I got yesterday from one of my kids. A set of washi tape in pretty colors. I like them. I like all of them. So that's a nice addition to my collection of washi tapes. Now what I got myself, these I just would order something and put it in my closet. And then I kind of forgot, I mean, I, I knew I had ordered a stamp from uh, Lorna Taylor at Taylor Made Journals, but I couldn't remember what it was. I knew it had something to do with sewing, so I was hoping I would <clears throat> be able to make something for the sewing journals that I'm working on, and I will because I'm not done making them yet. But I couldn't remember anything about it. I just knew it was a sewing stamp, so I just put the envelope in my cupboard, in my closet, closet and just opened it yesterday. And it is, looks like this. It says, know your needles, and it has an example of different types of needles and the names of them. She embossed it in gold on th this envelope that she sent it in. She always does that. She set, ships them in that. But I had to tear this to get it out because this one was a very tight fit and I just couldn't get it out. I had to tear the envelope, but I can keep this piece and look at the wax seal. She always puts a wax seal on them, too. So that's what this is. So I will definitely make something to go in the uh, journals that I'm creating right now. And then this piece came with it, and it says sewing with a needle and the thread, and the thread forms the letter, the words, the word sewing. I love it, Lorna. If you're watching this, I love this set of all of her stamps are gorgeous. <coughs> um, this is not a Sam Pool stamp. I don't even I don't know what brand it is. I probably saw it online when I was um, it's made in China when I was looking for the Sam Pool stamps, and I just love it. It's a one piece stamp, so it's a nice background stamp, and it's got music. This one has some. Uh, Maybe some French. I think it's French. It's got English words, too. Um, so it's got some lyrics there. And this little symbol. And I love this little label part. And then it has some definitions. Maybe not definitions. Oh, maybe it's um, an index. So this, this whole thing might be from an index of a music book. Anyway, it's a really fun... Um, background stamp that I will really have fun using. Then the Sam Poole stamps. Sam Poole is the designer and she has a YouTube channel, I believe, and she has uh, an Etsy store. So you can just, I think, just look for Sam Poole on Etsy. But these came from Creative Expressions. Um, I can try to link Creative Expressions shop um, and so she does a lot of French things. And this is La Parisienne. And it has French fashion advertisements, the corsets. Uh, this is about embroidery. Look at the shoe. And look at these little numbers. There's just so many fun little stamps. And those numbers are all separate. I took them out. They're, they're in cellophane, but I took them out to kind of reduce the glare. I know that there's still acrylic here that gives you a glare, but I think you can see them a little better. Aren't they nice? And this set is called Corset de Paris. So it has these little undershirt type of blouses. And I believe a while ago, I looked up Aubin Marche, and I think it's the name of a store in Paris, a haberdashery store in Paris. 
And this, this looks really nice, but when you see the size of the stamps, it's even better. Look at this one right here, and this nice journaling stamp with a spool of thread. And this would be stapled onto something. And this little embroidered corner. So that is Corset de Perry. And this is Dates from the Past. So it's a lot of dates and numbers. And I love this. It says number. And this is separate, I think. Let me see. They look like they're separate from the labels. Maybe that is too. Yeah, it is. So you can do the plain label and the plain number or put them together. You could put Paris in that. So this also, carte postale, that's also separate. So you get a lot of pieces in this. And there's even a little floral decoration. And this last set um, doesn't have anything to do with fashion, but it's gorgeous. It's also by Sam Poole, and it is called Butterfly Walk. There's a piece of cheesecloth there. This little butterfly, and then this collage with a butterfly. And some botanicals, some words. Uh, there's a definition of botanical there, and right attached to this weed is a definition of fleur or flowers, but you can't read it. It's it's um uh sketchy. And this little tag or label. This is a really fun uh set. It says collector of beautiful things and that could go along with anything, not just nature and flowers. I would use that in um like for buttons or laces or all kinds of things that you could you know, people who collect things. And so that would be a really nice little quote to put on any journal page. Notes, specimen, seeds, postcard, uh, grow, and observations. So I can't wait to play around with these, and we may do that before the video is over. Depends on how long we take with these books. So I got myself two books that, oh, this had been in my in my cart for a long time on Amazon. I will link these, the things that I got from Amazon. I don't, maybe these came from Amazon too. I don't even remember. I think they, I think they may have, but I'll, I'll link whatever I can in the description below. This is by 50 Search Press, I think. What that, maybe it's just 5 Search Press, but looks like 50. Daydream Journals by Tilly Rose. And I don't know if I will actually make things out of here. I, I hope to. Um, but she does a lot of slow stitching or embroidery. But I could, which I could do if I wanted to take the time to do embroidery. I used to embroider a lot. But um, I could just follow her instructions for creating the beautiful journals. See, this one has stamping on it but she colored the cloth, so I could do that. Daydream journals. Memories, ideas, and inspiration in stitch, cloth, and thread. This is beautiful. It's got, looks like maybe felt in different textures of fabrics, lots of embroideries, and some pretty buttons. I'm gonna try to watch so I'm not getting glare. Isn't that beautiful? So I like how she stacked these fabrics and and getting more and more um, textural as it gets to the edge. So there's fabric pieced together with embroidery and then another piece of fabric and then some skinnier pieces and looks like some very loosely woven fabric and then some trims and fibers with buttons. There's even a little Peter Rabbit down here. 
some little mushrooms. So even if I don't make anything with this book, which I really hope to do, but even if I don't, look at the spine on that. I would, I'll just be um, inspired to just look at it. I didn't buy it for so long because I didn't know if I would actually want to take the time to do the embroidery and stuff, but I decided it would be worth it just to have the beautiful book to look at. So she shows journals with her her day her um, daydream journals with her art, which would inspire her to do the embroidery. So there's sketches here. This is her. These are her personal journals with samples of lace and fabrics and dyes. Wouldn't you love that shelf with all of these gorgeous textural pieces? And this is kind of like a snippet roll wrapped around this spool. And I love, I always love a display of art supplies, don't you? Oh, she has some little safety pins pinned to the yo-yo. A fabric yo-yo. Collecting snippets. We love to do that, we junk journalers. Techniques. Rubber stamping. Creating a journal wrap template. So it's just muslin. She's. This is printed in Britain, so... When it says calico, it means muslin in America. Our calico is a little printed fabric. And if it says hessian, they mean burlap. I've learned that from watching YouTube of with British people. Flower squishing. So this is actually a flower in her hand. Rose petals and evening primrose. Oh, this is Evening Primrose, and this is the rose, and this is Budlia. I may have pronounced that wrong. So fun things to do with flowers from your garden, too. Berry squishing, leaf imprints, adding color to cloth and thread. Here she shows some jars with different natural ingredients, and it does say if, it, if you see mold, throw it away. It happens. It's nothing you did wrong but just try it again. Rose campion, marigolds, strawberries, black currants, blueberries, and marigolds. And these are left for days and even weeks. It says the strawberries have been in there for two and a half weeks. Seems like they would be moldy, but I don't know. And then creating dyes with, this is onion skin here. So there's all kinds of techniques. And here we have the moving on to cloth and thread. You can see how they're pieced together there and then stitched. Oh, it's just so beautiful and so inspiring. Love the colors of that picture. This is doing a running stitch with different um, thicknesses of yarn. This looks yummy with, it looks like sari silk wrapped around those spools. Maybe this year or next year, 2023, if I find these bobbins and spools at flea markets again, maybe I'll keep them and wrap stuff around them. The, the reason I, I don't is because I don't have room to store them in a pretty way. Yes, so beautiful. And then it says this section is the projects. So it actually walks you through the different projects. So this one is the one on the front. It says gatherings. So it creates a journal wrap and then it wraps around a journal, like a store-bought journal. But of course we could create our journal to wrap it around or we could just make this the cover of our journal that's attached to the signatures that we make. 
Oh, so this piece that I was looking at with all the, the layers and the rabbit and the mushroom, it's the back side of that. And this is the front. That one's not so many layers of fabric because it's just covered in embroidery. And another project is Diary of a Fen Gal. I think fen is a word for, I mm, should have looked it up. It's a forest. I want to say forest. First I was thinking swampy area, but I think it's forest. Well, I've got my phone right here. Let's find out. But she lives in Britain in a fen. She said, I saw that at the beginning. Fens are important in unique wetland types. Um, so I was right, it's kind of a swampy area. My first thought was right. Fens are peat forming wetlands that rely on groundwater input and require thousands of years to develop and cannot easily be restored once destroyed. They are home to rare plants, insects, and small mammals. So she lives in a wetland. Look at this. She's painting. This one is called Meandering Paths, and it's got like a little needle book page in the front. Maybe it is a whole needle book, but look how beautiful. Must be small. Well, it's not. Six and three quarters by nine and three quarters. Look at that. And it's got felt inside it. Maybe it is just a, no, nope, it's a needle book, but it's got pages. So it's a workbook. It's an artist book, and there uh, you can add a pocket to put your pencils and paintbrushes, and then you can take that and do some art, either embroidery or painting or drawing, or all together. An alchemy of secrets. This just just looks like it would be a beautiful fairy journal. Tales from a Victorian Haberdashery. And she shows you how she lays out the squares and then um, attaches them with stitches. A mood board. I love mood boards. I don't make them, but I love the way they look. I guess I feel intimidated by them. <laughs> Although they're supposed to inspire you to do your, to do your work. This is that big um, snippet roll, but I don't think you're supposed to snip anything off it. It's made of snippets. And it's not called... She calls this stitch wraps. Uh, and she, she named this one Winter Sparkle. And it looks like it's made with plaid scarf with the fringes. And it's attached to another piece of plaid and wrapped around a spool. And she made it in 2019. There's lots of embroidery and little buttons and all kinds of fun pieces. And here's an alternative project with bright colors, not so much embroidery, hand stamping, it says. So you can adapt these to your style. Then we have a jar of smiles and it shows how to make the wrap to go around this jar. and then keep whatever you want in there. It's got buttons, it's got little tags of paper with words. Cherish, smile, uh, seashells as an, a, an example of something you could keep in there. A Fenland docky. I don't know what a docky is, I've never heard of it. Oh, it says right here, a docky bag was a Fenman's go-to bag that he would use to carry his lunch in while working on the land. Agricultural workers would be docked pay if they stopped to take a tea break. So this this bag allowed them to take a swig of cold tea from a flask and a mouthful of bread and cheese as they worked in the fields. Hmm. So that's why it's called a docky. Well, that's fun. But wouldn't this make a fun journal um, pouch? 
with or without the strap. I think it would make a wonderful journal pouch. And then it has uh, the stitches and how to do the stitches, which is handy. So this is a wonderful book. I'm so glad I got it. I'm going to be spending some time looking at that and hopefully creating with it. The next book I think is just for looking at and for inspiring me, maybe, maybe in the craft room, but also hopefully in my decor. And it's called Granny Chic. Um, this is inside it. Looks like it was torn off of something, so it might have been, I don't remember how it came. I don't know what that came on. But already it has me, right, with these old embroidery pieces. Granny Chic by Tiff Fussell and Rochelle Blondell. These pictures are just, I want to live there. This is Rochelle's workspace. Look at that wastebasket, which she probably made, tulip shaped with patchwork scraps. And this is Tiff's workspace. I think I like the colors of this one. This was more my style of coloring. I mean, you could cut this up and make gorgeous things, but I definitely won't cut this up. So this is a penny. It's what they call an apron. This is also a British book. This is a perfectly peachy half penny and how to make it. So it does give you craft projects, which I'm sure could be adapted for junk journals. This says Glorious Gladys, so I wonder if that's the name of her trailer there, Gladys. There's the inside of it. Isn't that wonderful? Ugh. Oh, it's so, so cool. Perfectly round cushion. How to make it. Patched fabric. They have an assortment of vintage linens on their window. Decorated, so that's like an embellishment on a journal page. Decorated with embroidered pieces. That's what I need for my fabrics. I don't have a place like that. This is just a beautiful painted tray with all these, um, not, uh, what do you call them, notions on it. Dish cloths that were made out of old washcloths or flannel, flannels or old towels, and then they put the bias binding on them. There's a banner you can make with scraps. So I don't know the definition of granny chic. I can kind of guess at the definition, but I will find out when I read the book. This is a lampshade, kind of looks like the wastebasket turned the other way. I'll try to get through here a little quicker and maybe do a little bit of stamping. Not going to have time to do a lot, but I will certainly do another video with the stamping. Look at that covered chair. Wow. That is not a project I would want to do. Oh, a Kantha cushion. So was that made with a Kantha quilt from India? Yeah, I think so. It's got the lines of stitching, but I've never seen them with these pretty patterns. This one, yes, I've seen that sort of thing, but not this shabby chic looking design on a Kantha quilt. There's a full apron. Now that page just looks pretty. It looks like it would be in a junk journal. crochet string bag. So we get into some yarn projects. 
cluster of doilies table mat. These are all tacked together so it makes a table mat and I think that's really pretty. Look at crochet doilies on the steps. They're probably adhered very securely and then this mannequin is covered. This is probably a crocheted tablecloth and then all these doilies. A tea cozy. Oh, look at that. Oh. Traveling tail blanket for a picnic. Beautiful fabric. Look at the jar covers. These are strip. I did read a little bit about this. It's strips of fabric somehow wrapped around and glued. It, it calls for fabric glue and a glue brush. They are gorgeous. And this definitely looks like something we would use in junk journals. They have them hanging from a string right there. But it's a little fab uh, paper snippet. Look at that! Patchwork on the outside of the trailer. Oh my word. This one is Marvelous Maud. One was Gladys. This one's Maud. And then the inside of it. Wonderful. Look at the door. I could make my living space so much more creative than it is. Notebooks. Vintage decals. Look at that. Love that. Wow. That's a lot of work, arranging that and then getting everything on the walls. But it is beautiful. Oh, love that. Well, these are really fun to look at. It looks like wallpaper. Part of that wall. The little Dutch shoes. And that pair. Oh, they're little felt slippers. I love the little deer. I'm gonna start looking for little vintage deer like that or little woodlands animals when I go to flea markets and stuff because I love them. What a fun book. That's probably Gladys again. Well, this I can use in junk journals. Tell me what you think about these books. And I will try to remember. Well, I will remember. I will try to find them to link them. Let's play with some of the stamps. I've got a little bit of time. About... 10-15 minutes. I want to see how this one goes. This is from a book, Flyleaf I think, so I'll just use that green part. I have my basket of little scrap pieces that I want to use, so I thought I could use some of them by trying out these stamps. got ink on the edges. We'll see if it comes off onto the page. No, but it's not very dark. I wonder... But 
but it didn't didn't give any smudges. I have this piece of parchment. I'll save that for something else. Most of these pieces are skinny little strips. Here's a, here's a big enough one. I won't cut that off yet. Maybe I'll leave it that way. Oh yes, that's much better. And you can read the, the words, even though the words are small. That's really pretty. So I could put some lace or something up there and make a little booklet out of this. and see what this one ends up looking like. Sewing. It's really nice. That print that stamps very nicely and clear. This is from the back of a greeting card. You can see the scalloped edge and it's parchment. It's got the number down there. This is that embroidered corner. Let's just play. These are bigger than I um, anticipated. I remembered having one of these when I tried to, if I tried to think about what was in this, these stamp sets that were hiding in my closet, this is what I remembered, just one of those little undershirts or camisoles. And then I was pleasantly surprised that there were two of them I probably needed to wipe this off. It, I can feel it's sticky, and so it didn't print really clearly. Sometimes brand new acrylic stamps have a sticky coating on them. So I'll just wipe these off. try that journal stamp too. Okay, I wanted to put this across there but in a lighter color. Let's 
try this coffee, it says. scrap to try it out. Okay, I like that. pretty blue bluebird for the embroidery. Well that makes a pretty piece. a little bit. It's pretty crooked. I guess that it's a little too small for that. I'm just cutting off the torn edges. I don't want to lose the scallop, but I'm going to, I'll have the scallop here. I'm going to cut that off. I could have covered it with washi tape or something, but I think it would just look better to keep it contained to this smaller size. I like that. pretty. Find something to put this on. I know I already wiped it off. I just want to make sure. that I painted. It's a textured, like a watercolor card. Gotta put it on the right way. still a little bit sticky. You could hear that, couldn't you?
was afraid because of the texture. But I can put an embellishment there and use the card anyway. Let's try it on a paper that's not textured. I got this piece of file folder. Oh, much better. Yes. That is a nice stamp. I'll just stamp one of these to cut out, have to use. stamped beautifully. That empty corner is just the way the stamp is made. something else will fit on here. I didn't didn't space things out very well. I could do this little tag. It says pre, which I think P R I X, which I think means prize, doesn't it? The Grand Prix is the big prize, the grand prize. Oh, I didn't even wipe this set off. Yeah, I've got room to do another one of that. I'll definitely do a whole video making things with these new stamps. Got pretty close to the edge there. Nice. Now I can just cut those out and have them ready to use. So that was fun and I can't wait to get back to it. But I have other things I must do today. I really want to work on the sewing journals and I can use some of these to create things for the sewing journals. Thanks for watching. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. I um, spent the day yesterday at my son's house with my kids and grandkids, and it was just a nice day. And we just enjoy being together, and that's really special. I hope you had a nice Christmas. Um, I have heard from a couple of my viewers, because I asked in my video yesterday um, about your weather situation, and uh, at least one person told me that they were they were in the brunt of it in New York, in western New York, I guess, and without power, or at least part of the state was without power. And I guess she was too, yeah, she was. No heat for eight hours or something like that. So I'm glad that uh, you made it through. And I just hope that 
everybody gets cleaned out, shoveled out, and um, able to get their utilities again, and able to get out and get whatever supplies you need. But um, thanks for watching today, and tell me what you like best from my Christmas haul, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Have a creative day. Bye-bye.